Welcome. In this video, we are going to see the timers in PIC 16F877 microcontroller. So among that, the first timer is timer 0. So timer 0 is a 8-bit timer counter, means it can be used as a timer or it can be used as a counter. And 8-bit means it can go from 00, 0 to FF, that is the maximum value. Then uh, the timer 0 is readable as well as writable means the registers in which the value of timer is counted that value can be read as well as we can write any value in that register and the counting can start from that value onwards. Then timer 0 is having 8 bit software programmable prescaler. So prescaler is again a block which is before the uh, actual timer uh, block and the clock is given to this prescaler and from this prescaler the clock is given to the timer block so using this prescaler we can divide the clock signal by some specific value and then the reduced clock frequency value can be given as input to the actual timer block okay so uh, that is possible with the help of this programmable prescaler Again, the prescaler is of 8 bit, so we can divide the clock signal by different values. Then there is a facility of selecting internal clock or external clock for the timer. Now, whenever we use internal clock as an input to the timer block, then we are operating the timer in timer mode, and whenever we are going to uh, give external clock signal as an input to the timer then we are going to use the timer as a counter or we are operating it in a counter mode then interrupt on overflow from ff to 00, zero. so as we know the timer is of uh, 8 bits so the maximum value possible is ff so after ff if one more clock signal is given then the value will roll over to 00, zero. okay and at the same time an interrupt will be generated then uh, edge select for external clock is uh, also uh, available so on rising edge the timer should increment or on falling edge the timer should increment that can be decided if we are going to use the external clock signal as an input to the timer means if we are going to operate the timer in counter mode at that time we can decide on which type of clock signal the timer must increment so this is the block diagram of timer 0 in peak 16f877 so in this block diagram we are having this as the external pin so whenever we are going to operate this timer 0 in counter mode at that time we have to provide external clock that clock can be applied on this external pin that is ra4 pin or it is also having name as t0cki that is timer 0 clock input then if you are going to operate this timer in timer mode in that case the clock signal is the internal clock signal so the cpu clock that is divided by 4 that is f oscillator divided by 4 and that clock signal is given as input to the timer now using this first multiplexer we can decide whether we want to give internal clock or external clock as an input to the timer so that can be decided with the help of this t0 cs bit so this bit is available in option register so that is one of the sfr which is used for configuring the timer zero so depending on value of this bit the clock will be selected if the value is zero then internal clock will be selected and if value is one then external clock will be selected now uh, this another bit is there that is t0 se that is timer zero source edge so whenever we are going to operate this timer zero as a counter then in that case external clock is given as input to the timer so using this bit that is t0se we can decide whether the timer will increment on rising edge or falling edge of the external clock for that purpose this t0se bit is used then the clock signal is further given to another multiplexer and this multiplexer is controlled with the help of this bit called as PSA. So PSA stands for prescaler assignment. Now the prescaler which is there 
for timer 0 that can be utilized for either timer 0 or watchdog timer. So if the value of this PSA bit is 1 then in that case the prescaler is assigned to the watchdog timer and if the value of this PSA bit is 0 then the prescaler is assigned to the timer 0. So similarly we have one more multiplexer over here which does the same thing. So if the prescaler is assigned to timer 0 then the clock signal will go from here to this multiplexer and from this multiplexer it will go to this prescaler and this using this prescaler we can divide the clock by a specific value okay. and the output of this prescaler is again given back to the another multiplexer and through this multiplexer it is given to the further blocks so the next block is sync two cycles so uh, if we are going to use the external clock signal then using this sync two cycles block we can sync the external clock and the internal cpu clock and the final block here is the timer 0 register block. So this is a 8 bit register which increments on every clock pulse. Right. So whenever the timer 0 register overflows, we can get an interrupt signal that is uh, indicated with the help of this flag that is T0IF that is timer 0 uh, overflow flag. Then here we are having a watchdog timer. So a Waldock timer is again used for monitoring the operation of CPU. So the prescaler which is there that can be assigned to this Waldock timer or the timer 0. So we can enable this Waldock timer with the help of this WDT bit which is present in the configuration bits of PIC 16F 877. So this is the block diagram of timer 0. So here a, a small working of the timer 0 as a timer is shown and timer 0 is operating in timer mode so whenever the timer 0 is operating in timer mode the clock is from internal clock so that clock and this doesn't matter the value of t0 se because we are not going to use the external clock now here the value of t0 cs should be 0 to select the clock from internal clock source and here prescaler is assigned to timer 0 okay. so the clock arrives at this multiplexer then from there it goes to the prescaler okay, and from prescaler it gets divided by a specific value and then that clock signal is again given back to the uh, multiplexer and through that multiplexer it goes to the next block that is sync 2 cycles okay. and from there it is given to the timer 0 register. Then the SFRs that are needed for uh, timer 0 are the timer 0 register in which the value of the timer is continuously getting incremented. Then we are having option register. So this option register is a SFR which is used for configuring the timer 0. Then next one is INTCON. So for timer 0 overflow flag the uh, bit is present in this INTCON register. And we also have TRIS A register which is related to timer 0 because whenever we are going to use uh, timer 0 as a counter at that time we need to use the RA4 pin of port A as an input for giving the clock. So the next uh, SFR that is required for timer 0 configuration is the option register. So this is the format for option register. It is a 8 bit register. So the MSB bit is RBPU bar. This is actually used for port B uh, internal pull up. So if you want to use the port B internal pull ups, then we have to make this bit 0. Otherwise, we, we can make this bit as 1. Then next is INT EDG. So this is used for uh, selecting the type of interrupt edge. If that bit is 1, then the interrupt will be generated on rising edge of signal on RB0 pin. And if it is 0, then interrupt will be generated on falling gauge. So these two bits are not related to uh, timer 0, okay, but still these are present in option register. Then the next bit is T0CS. So this bit is timer 0 clock source select bit. So using this bit, we can decide whether we want to operate the timer 0 in timer mode or in counter mode. Right? If this bit is 0, it means that we are going to operate that in timer mode and if we, this bit is 1 then we can operate the timer 0 in counter mode. Then the next one is T0SE so this is timer 0 source edge selection bit 
so using this bit we can decide whether the timer will increment on rising edge of external clock signal or falling edge of the external clock signal whenever we are operating timer 0 in counter mode then the next bit is PSA that is prescaler assignment bit so this bit is used for assigning the prescaler so the prescaler is shared between wall dock timer and the timer 0 so if this bit is 0 then the prescaler is assigned to timer 0 and if this bit is 1 then the prescaler is assigned to wall dock timer then the remaining three bits that is ps2 ps1 and ps0 are used for setting the prescaler value so if you are assigning the prescaler to the timer 0 then the values of these bits are used for dividing the clock signal by a specific value as shown in this table so if the value is of these three bits is 0 0 0 then the clock will be divided by 2 and then it will be given as input to the timer similarly for all other values the clock is divided by a specific value the maximum value can be 256 since we are having a 8 bit prescaler so similarly whenever the prescaler is assigned to wall dock timer these are the values that are available for the prescaler so in summary we have a timer 0 and that can be operated in timer mode or in counter mode right now uh, in case of timer mode the clock signal is internal clock signal and in case of counter mode the clock signal is external clock signal then uh, in case of timer mode t0 cs bit should be made equal to 0 and in case of counter mode the t0 cs bit should be made equal to 1 now in case of timer mode this t0 se bit is don't care because we are going to use the internal clock and this t0 se is used to only for the external clock signal so for counter mode whenever that bit is 1 then the timer will be incremented whenever we have a falling edge that is high to low signal and whenever that bit is 0 it means that the timer will be incremented on a rising edge that is from low to high so if you have any doubt query related to this timer 0 you can put those in the comments thank you